Hi everyone. So I thought I'd do a quick video of um, how to lower a DS3. So I've gone for these EBAC springs. There's yet four in a kit. That's the um, the part number I've got. I've got a, uh, a 90 horsepower HDI. So uh, these springs are, um, are designed for the, the lighter cars. So the 1.6 VTI and uh, I think the PureTech as well. The first thing I'd say to do would be to take the, the wipers off and the scuttle panel. Um, down here that you'll probably find loads of leaves and stuff so just get rid of all that and then in the corners there there's a, uh, a rubber bung if you remove the rubber bung it'll stop it um, getting filled up with leaves uh, and then um, getting water into the car there's another one on this side as well once you've jacked up your car and supported it on axle stands take your wheels off and then you'll need to undo a nut there for the anti-roll bar drop link take these out as well and then there's a, another nut at the bottom it's the pinch bolt for the the clamp for the hub so if you undo those once you have the anti-roll bar drop link out and and done the nut down here the hub should start to come loose you can see here there's a witness mark where it's starting to come out if you just bang that down it should free the strut once that's loose like that uh, you can remove it from the top next you need to undo that nut there and then the whole strut should be able to be taken out from the bottom. So once you're undoing the 21mm nut, that should just come off. And you're left with that. Then all you have to do is take the strut from underneath out. When you're removing the strut, make sure you don't get the, uh, the brake pipe caught on it, and also the um, the ABS wire. And when you're smacking this down, make sure you don't hit the ABS sensor. That's the uh, strut removed. When you have everything apart, just go over everything, check that your bearings are okay in there. I've cleaned them up and uh, stuck a bit of chain lube in there, so that would be good. Uh, bump stop was a bit damaged, but I've chopped the, um, the last bit off, the damaged bit off. Because it's lower, it, it needs a bit of chopping off anyway. Then all you have to do now is reassemble everything. After a bit of fighting, it's on the shaft. Um, just make sure that the, uh, the coil starts there. Once you've wrestled the strut back into position, there's a dot or dimple at the back. That's got to line up with the slot otherwise it won't be aligned properly and the other bit is the uh, the top mount you have to make sure that the hole in the top mount aligns with that hole there otherwise all the alignment will be out as well so uh, to get the um, strut back in I'm just going to use a jack to push it back on you can see here that I've used the jack to push the hub back onto the strut. And there's a uh, raised section there, and that's where uh, it locates onto. After about an hour of trying to get it in the car, I realised that the top mount needs to go on first. That nut doesn't go onto the washer in there. Um, I've had all sorts of problems, but um, went over the diagram again and realised that the uh, I was missing the, uh, the top mount. 
So just make sure that you put the that plastic thing in first, a washer, then this top mount, then this nut. So I've moved the I've compressed the spring with the jack underneath the hub. Uh, made sure that the um, the hub is fully up against there. Gave it a bit of a tap just to make sure it's all seated correctly. Then I've tightened up that pinch bolt and at the top when I moved up the um, when I put the strut into position put it through the hole put the, the nut on so it dangled from the nut and um, put got this allen key in here to um, make sure that the top mount is in the correct alignment when I bought the car the top mounts weren't installed properly at all when the spring snapped from the previous owner Okay, now on the passenger side, we have the um, the gearbox. Um, what I found on my old car was once you take the strut out, the um, the hub will come away and then pull the drive shaft out of the gearbox, and you'll lose oil. So what I've done is I've put a strap around the uh, caliper and around the anti-roll bar to stop the um, the hub coming away and pulling the drive shaft. There we go then, strip is out and that uh, strap is holding in the, uh, the drive shaft so no leaks. Here we go then, so passenger side's all taken apart. This is what I meant by the, uh, the damage to the bump stop on the, uh, the driver's side because there's not going to be as much travel, I'm just going to cut that off. I think with the Spax um, kit, you have to cut as that much off. Not too sure, but I'll just cut that off anyway. Okay, not too sure how much you'll be able to see. I've laid everything out in order. So you can grab your strut and the spring. That bit lines up there. Then I've pushed the um, bump stop into there, just clicks into position and that just goes over the top. Next thing is this washer. Because these are stamped out, they'll have a, a sharp edge and a, a not so sharp edge. So I think I'm gonna put the not so sharp edge on this side so it doesn't damage the plastic as much. And this is the thing I forgot to do last time is the top mount. Last time I put that in first and then wondered why it wouldn't work. So that goes on next. And then the, the nut on the top. Now the strut's all complete. I'm going to uh, feed it up into, into the shop tower. Make sure it's aligned properly. And then just drop the spacer and the nut on top, and then we can put it back into the hub. Okay, now try and uh, get the, the bottom of the strut back into the hub. So that's all in position now. Make sure that the brake pipe is on the right side and the ABS sensor cable is on the right side. Now I'm going to chuck this up and it should all fit 
So you might just be able to lift it. I think I might jack it. We're now at the rear of the car. I'm about to change the rear springs. These should be a lot easier. Here's the spring here. You've got the damper. You can't see, but there's the damper there. Uh, it's just the damper that holds it in. So we'll jack up the, the rear beam a little bit, undo the bolt that's in there, and then we should be able to get the springs out. Should be able to see the bolt there. I've just done the other, undone the other side as well. So hopefully should be enough to let things come out. That's the rear springs removed. And fitting the new springs is just as simple as that. Once you've jacked up the spring pan, you can and then make sure that the damper is lined up in the hole through there. You can insert the bolt back in and tighten it up. Try not to drop your socket in the hole as you take the extension out. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. 